So in a previous video, we had this bicycle moving at a velocity v in the i-hat direction or horizontally, and we were interested in velocities at various points along this front wheel. What I'd like to do in this video is to extend those results and look at a very important result that has to do with acceleration. So if we're going to have acceleration, let's do it. So the velocity, as I said, of the bike is v in the i-hat direction, but now that velocity is not constant. So in other words, let's suppose we also have an acceleration. I'm going to call it a in the i-hat direction, where this a, of course, is just the time derivative of v, right, just by definition. Now I also want you to recall that in the previous video, we derived an expression for the angular velocity of that front wheel, right? The front wheel is rotating, and it might make sense that it's rotating uh, clockwise here and we found that 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 angular velocity I'll call it omega it was maybe I'll call it a mega in the k hat direction which we came up with a minus V divided by R in that k hat direction yeah remember that thing and we derived this expression by enforcing the fact that if this bicycle is if the bicycle wheel is rolling without slip, then this point right here of the wheel in contact with the ground must have the exact same speed or exact same velocity as the ground at that point. And the ground is not moving at all, so therefore the, that point on the wheel has to have zero velocity. And that's what gave us this relationship for the angular velocity of the wheel. Notice that it's if v is positive, in other words, if the bike is moving forward, then this angular velocity is in the minus k hat direction. And that comes, at least that makes sense from the right hand rule. If you take your thumb and stick it in the minus k hat direction, which is into the screen, your fingers will wrap around in the direction or in the clockwise direction. So that's the direction of the wheel motion. So I'm hoping that's all, that all makes sense. And you recall all that. So we're gonna jump off from this point right here. So now I want us to think about the angular acceleration of the wheel, okay? So we've got this, this wheel that's rotating, it's got an angular velocity to match the velocity of the bike, but the, but the bike speed is changing. As if A is positive, then this bike is going faster and faster. So what's the wheel doing, right? You might expect the wheel to start spinning faster and faster, right? So let's look at that angular acceleration. And the angular acceleration, we got alpha, just by definition, it's the time derivative of angular velocity, which is going to take your, your omega that we've just calculated in the k hat direction, taking the time derivative of that component since the k hat direction is fixed. And if I go one step further over here, I gotta take the time derivative of this. Well, r is just the radius of the, of the wheel, so that's not changing. The only thing that's changing is the speed. So my angular acceleration, I can write as minus v dot divided by r. Again, the velocity, <laughs> the angular velocity must be v divided by r in order to match that no slip condition at the bottom of the wheel. So just take its derivative that leads to my angular acceleration. And of course, I can write that v dot as a, so I can write it as minus a over r in the k hat direction. And you might want to take a second to make sure that this minus sign makes sense. All right, pause it right here and, and verify that yourself. So I would argue that the minus sign makes sense because if a is positive, then the bike is going faster and faster in the i hat direction. If it's going faster and faster in the i-hat direction, then the wheel is going to turn at a greater rate of rotation in the clockwise direction, right? A clockwise rotation is an angular velocity into the screen, and that angular velocity is increasing, so it's getting more and more farther into the screen, so therefore the angular acceleration, again, is in the minus k-hat direction. It's into the screen. So I'm thinking that makes sense. So let me take this result that we've uh, just uh, come up with and I'll rewrite it in more compact form. There, there's that compact form. So now the next question I wanna ask is what is the acceleration at the bottom of the wheel? So the bottom of the wheel is something previously I called point B. So this is at the, on, the, on the wheel where it's touching the ground. And I wanna know the acceleration of that point. Remember, we know its velocity has to be zero at that instant that it's in contact with, its, with the ground. 
but what is the acceleration of this point? And this is an important question because it comes in in the analysis of gears and the dynamics of rolling things. And, and so this question is going to be important to us, critically important to us. So I want to answer it right now. So now, just using the relationships we've derived previously, is that the acceleration of point B, we can write as the acceleration of the hub plus the acceleration of point B relative to the hub. And the acceleration of point B relative to the hub, we have an alpha cross position of B relative to hub minus omega squared, where omega should be this term right there, that the magnitude of your angular velocity, squared times uh, position of B relative to hub. And let's just carry that out further. The acceleration of hub, what is that? Take a second, think about it. What is the acceleration of the hub? Well, the acceleration of the hub is the acceleration of the frame, right? Because the hub belongs to the same rigid body as the frame, assuming that we're not turning the handlebar. So the acceleration of the hub is just A in the I hat direction. The angular acceleration of my body was just minus alpha over r in the k hat direction vector cross product with r b relative to h what's r b relative to h again pause the video and draw for me r b relative to h okay r b relative to h so r b relative to h should be the position of b as if we're standing on h that's r b relative to h right there so this is a distance are in the minus j hat direction. And then I've got minus omega squared, so minus speed squared divided by r squared in the j hat direction. And I see I'm kind of trying to squeeze my the rest of my work into the screen right here so I don't have to scroll away. So let me just uh, try to put the results right in here. And let me switch colors. So I've got the acceleration up point B is equal to, I got an A in the I hat direction, and I just noticed a mistake. The angular acceleration is not alpha divided by R, it's A divided by R, right? Ah, I hate it when I make the mistakes like that, so let's fix it. A divided by R, that's better. So I've got A divided by R times R, which is just going to be A. I got a minus minus, so this looks like A. Uh, but in the direction is k cross j, which is minus i. So this expression right here is going to be minus a in the i hat direction. And this is positive a in the i hat direction. So these two terms are going to cancel each other out perfectly. Those two terms annihilate each other. And what we have left is speed squared divided by r squared. And I notice I made another mistake here. I got speed squared divided by r squared. That is only the, the omega squared, right? Omega is speed over r. So speed squared over r squared is speed squared over r squared. That's the omega squared. But I forgot the rb relative to the h. Ah, uh, oof, sheesh. Okay, let's erase this, make room for it. So we're multiplying by, by minus r in the j hat direction. Yeah, and when we do that, let's see. What do we got? Speed squared divided by r squared. I'm multiplying by r. And I got a minus and a minus, which make a plus. So this is speed squared divided by r in the j hat direction. Oh, look at that. And that's all I get from my acceleration. Now this, I claim, is interesting. All right, so now let's think about this result in terms of things we've already seen, right? We've already seen that what at this point B that's in contact with the ground, at the instant that point is in contact with the ground, the velocity is zero. But here's the acceleration of that point B. First of all, we note that it's not zero, okay? The horizontal component is zero. So the component of acceleration in the I hat direction is zero, but that point is accelerating and it's accelerating in the j hat direction. Ooh. So if I had erase this, let me just get rid of what we had over here. This acceleration of point B is upward. It's upward. This acceleration of point B is not proportional to the acceleration of the bike. It's proportional to the speed of the bike. It's because this acceleration of point B is a centripetal acceleration. That's 
That's its, its origin. That's its nature. It's proportional to speed. And that's the type of acceleration we will have. Again, this result is very important in gear analysis and a lot of dynamics of rolling analysis. And you're going to have to refer to it again, I promise you, in this class at least, we're going to see it again. It's very important to note that the acceleration is a, is a perpendicular acceleration. It's not a tangential acceleration. There is no acceleration in the eye head direction. Right? It's all centripetal. It's speed squared divided by R. It's in that positive E hat, excuse me, positive J hat direction. It's toward the center of rotation of the body. And that's your result.